And welcome back folks to Let's Play Back to Future Being I'm Gone Games and let's carry on with the rest of the episode. Soup. Let's go still take your talk to Doc. What do you think? You saved for me, Doc. I did? Right. May 14th, 1986. 1980? Oh, the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago. But the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful <laughs> to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Aye. Well, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Yeah. Hey, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. <laughs> Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Well, I don't know, let's... Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting... Why didn't you do that in the first place, place Martha? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Oh. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Uh. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? A rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! What about the space gun to continue? What about your past? Don't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Go. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. <laughs> Heard of? I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Here's a point. Right, soup kitchen. Let's go to the soup kitchen. Uh, 
I bet folks this is exactly the same place and where the where the uh, what's it called this in 1955 the cafe ha make fly eh? kid grandpa that's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. Oh, God, not another oh, one. That's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Oh. Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. <sighs> Looks like we've got work to do with that. Eh? I mean, Grandpa. Do you know where I can find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Mm, yes, he's calling. The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Well, you don't know. Go. Go to the court, I'll send, shall we? Sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Well, Judge Brown? Emmett uh, Brown. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael uh, Corleone. No, we didn't say that. We said we're Sonny Crockett. I'm a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. We need to hear this. do we take H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A minus H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A minus B to the A minus B. Oh, think, Emma, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Times acceleration, of course, that's new. But how many newtons are required to maintain a constant mass of acceleration is reduced by the universe over the speed. <laughs> well, I think Doc will be able to figure out that one. I could talk to Doc about it. Psst! Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? So, Doc, does this ring a bell? No, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so 
young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell I am yourself that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional memory. So... It'll be fine. Okay, thank you, Doc. Oh yeah, there's no truffer. How'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. It's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I miss you too, Marty, but I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. <laughs> so how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Bird to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 <coughs> soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. In 2011, that's about now. Where did the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Riff Tan from vandalizing the time stream. Eddie, so that DeLorean... ...is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. Well, you get another trophy for that. So, look at the DeLorean. Anyway? <laughs> oh, discover the... Uh, great. Discover the story behind the new DeLorean or something like that. But you get another trophy there. Rare out of print books to surprise Clara on her birthday. Solve a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. <laughs> Fair play, Doc. That's who I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good! I wish I could, though. This air is tan and is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kitan's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Okay, I'm gonna go then. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <laughs> He's right. It's got to come on. Ah, oh, silly controls. It's got to have two young Emmett Brown, shall we? And then after we sorted that out, I think you could have cut off. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me. I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. What the hell? Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? 
Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? <sighs> I really... Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. Oh, that's fully operational. Tonight. Oh, otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it and I'll see to where you get the alcohol you need. It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. You got a subpoena from Grandpa? <gasps> it's Kid Tannen! Hey, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. I'm gonna cut it off here, folks. I've been Gun Games. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.